last night uh, I had the uh, great honor of meeting Julian Hecklin. He's a uh, he, he is a liberty activist. He he is a uh, professional uh, civil disobedient you know person who carries out acts of civil disobedience. Um, Mr. Hecklin yesterday was his 79th birthday. Uh, he's a retired chemistry professor from Penn State, and uh, he lives in New Jersey now. Uh, on the 25th of February, he was indicted in federal court for by federal prosecutors for for handing out uh, fully informed jury association pamphlets on the steps of a federal courthouse in New York City. <laughs> they they accused him of jury tampering, even though he had been doing such for over a year and had handed out. Uh, pamphlets to people in hundreds of juries, you know. Uh, so how could they say that he was targeting any specific case, which is something that you have to be able to prove, you know, for for the charge of jury tampering? It's absolutely insane. Uh, but uh, Mr. Mr. Hecklin, fan fantastic individual. He has a book. Um, I bought a couple of copies. Um, the Non-Trials, as lived by Julian Hecklin, and uh, it's it's his. His, his experience in the court system and uh, he's been arrested 31 times uh, and jailed on 10 occasions uh, he had some interesting stories about meeting uh, you know crips in the uh, in the in Rikers Island and uh, and uh, meeting these you know all these different people like LSD dealers and all these people who are locked <laughs> up and you know and the the network of, of thieves, and, that, and that's another interesting thing about you know having people locked up because you take a, a normal uh, a non uh, a nonviolent offender and you put them in jail with a bunch of violent offenders, and there's a pretty big chance that that nonviolent guy is going to come out violent. So, but uh, what, what do you expect to happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, no, but but Julian is it was a fantastic. He he gave a great speech at the uh, Libertarian Party Broward County's meeting. Um, he, he he gave a fantastic presentation. A uh, truly heartfelt individual, very passionate about the, um, the about liberty and, and being a liberty activist. Uh, he he came to Liberty. He he was a ACLU uh, member supporter for a long time. Uh, as he was on the faculty at Penn State, he actually worked to to oversee that the police that the uh, campus security was not being abusive to students. And he said that he was very very pleased to say that in, in the decades that he did it, there was never a reported case of uh, police brutality uh, on the student body in, at Penn State, and uh, he was very happy with that, and that you know, spoke very highly of the of the uh, security agents and the police there in uh, Center County in Pennsylvania, but uh, <clears throat> uh, he so so he, he came from that perspective, and, and um, he, he, w he was a liberty activist, but he also as a chemistry professor, uh, in his words, he they had to secure and make sure that all the chemicals in the labs, these are the four big laboratory buildings at, uh, on the main campus there, uh, that they were secure in the 70s during uh, during the Vietnam War, um, you know, in the late 60s when they had these uprisings, mm -hmm. uh, all these uh, all this violence that was going on back in the you know the William Ayers days, uh, because he said if if something was to go wrong in one of those labs, the uh, the pieces of the lab would be falling down on Washington, because <laughs> the explosion would be so big. So uh, he, he you know he was he was involved from from both sides, making sure that people weren't abused, but also that um, that that that. that things were protected and and you know he, he so he saw that from, from both angles but uh, he he gave a really great speech he, he um he was a person who never thought about dr drug use and never never once thought about um uh, that th that drugs could possibly be a, a, a positive thing or that they weren't anything but evil i mean he said all he knew about uh people who used narcotics was that they deserved to be locked up for the rest of their lives and he told a story about how he, he came across the fact that over 10% of the budget of the state of Pennsylvania was going to be spent on keeping people locked up mm -hmm. uh, because of the increased arrests, because of the Reagan's war on drugs. And uh, he suddenly became very interested in not having people in prisons. Now, what, what, and, what's, uh, the, what's the legal ramifications of the uh, fully formed uh, jury association? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we're going to 
Let's get back to his <laughs> indictment on the 25th. Okay, fully formed jury association. Uh, the legal ramifications are he, what what they teach is the idea of jury nullification. The, um, that uh, at any step in the legal process, you know, a cop can look the other way and say, okay, yeah, I'm not going to bring you up on charges, or a prosecutor can look the other way and say, yeah, I'm not going to file. I'm not going to file charges. No, that routinely happens. And, and this routinely times... happens all the time. A judge can say, no, we're not going to try this case. Um, uh, but what the fully formed jury association, FIJA, what they tell you is, and they, and they use documentation all throughout history, they use the words of our founding fathers, that, that the jury also has that, that right. It's not a privilege, it's a right. The jury has a right to nullify, and it, and it has to do with um, anchoring the government to the people. Now, th now that's, uh, that's what happened in, in Ohio with the, uh, um, uh, the tax case a few years back, where the, mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman didn't file his taxes, his state taxes, mm -hmm. and they brought him up on, on the charges for that, for not filing taxes. And, they, and the law said that if, you, if you're required to file a federal tax, then you have to file a state tax. Yeah, yeah. Well, they went and said, all right, show us the law where you have to file a federal tax. Well, they couldn't show them a law because there is none. The law, the law doesn't exist that says you have to pay it. Therefore, right. the jury said, well, if he doesn't have to pay the federal, then he don't have to pay the state. Therefore, he's innocent. So the jury came back with the non-guilty. And in that way, it was, they nullified what was expected. Everyone expected him to be found guilty because he didn't file the taxes. He said he didn't file the taxes. And there was, you know, the proof was there. He didn't file the taxes. But it right. was nullified because... He wasn't required to, and it's the jury go doing a 180 on the law. The judge went nuts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so also, they, late last the, year, is when we talk about the power of the jury. You know, once it gets to the jury, the jury has some authority. They they absolutely do. That's the whole purpose of having a trial by jury, and this is what pisses the the the, the court off, and all of the officers of the court, the prosecutor and the defense attorneys and and the judges, uh, because. Uh, their first duty is to the court and uh, not to justice, <laughs> as it is. And um, the judge will tell you how you're supposed to rule because you are supposed to, to have an opinion as a jury based on the law as he describes it or dictates it to you. Right. But what Fiji says is, no, you, you rule on the law as you would rule on the law. The jury uh, – and this you know talks – this goes back to the whole thing about grand juries and like the jury – is the decider and it you know the the art of law this whole practice of law and all of its forms and all of its rules and all of its uh jurisprudence it, it doesn't matter because the focus of law is to carry out justice so if the jury can see through the legal wranglings and see it as uh you know bs as garbage as basura, as the Spanish would say, if, if they see this trash, they can take it out. They can take out the garbage mm -hmm. and say, no, uh, no, this law is bad or this is procedural. Uh, I mean, there was a case uh, just this past week uh, involving child pornography uh, and, and not actual child pornography. But <laughs> you know how the, the law is like. It's like it's like acid. Anything that mm -hmm. kind of comes close to it, it gets touched. I mean, the the government shut down yeah, ten thousand websites when only a dozen of them actually had images on it. Yeah, ten thousand websites. Say, the government flipped a switch and shut them off. Yeah, so any, any image that conveys um, conveys the thoughts or uh, or the uh, I'm trying to think what, what is it, exactly what it says. I don't have it in front of me, but it, it's not just for, uh, photographs. But it can be uh, drawings or images. Uh, that a computer generated that also falls into the category sure mm -hmm. yeah it's, and so but but it, the the uh you know because because that's the that's a, a dark and evil thing so the the power hungry people use that that's their tool that they used it to take power and so in this case uh, a prosecutor said that it was unjust it was an injustice but then he went and prosecuted the case anyway because it was the law I mean, he's he's on record as saying it, it was injustice and it would be a miscarriage of justice, but he went ahead and prosecuted it anyway. It, his first duty as a 
prosecutor is to justice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the truth. Right. You so if he think... knows that it's injustice, don't prosecute it. <laughs> oh, man. I tell you, so, it, don't, it cracks me up to see it. It really does. Oh, it's, it's disgusting. But there was a case um, late last year in Missoula, Montana, where um, a man was arrested with uh, one sixteenth of an ounce, so a couple of grams of uh, marijuana, and they went through, I believe it was 30 potential jury members, and every single one of them said, no, no, I'm not going to convict this person. I can't, I can't convict this person. I'm not going to sit in w through a trial and try to convict a person. I'm not going to waste the, the, my time or the state's time with this. And the judge, after going through 30 people, looked at the prosecutor and said, I can't sit a jury. No case. Dismissed. <laughs> oh, man. So because I... the law is supposed to carry out justice. And, and there's when we talk about things like community standard and when we talk uh, obscenity and obscenity is always tried on a community standard, right? That's what the Supreme court ruling is the idea that, uh, you know, I don't know obscenity, but I know it when I see it, you know? <laughs> so there's a, a community, some collective community standard out there as to what is dirty, which, which makes sense in, in a certain way, because, uh, because what is offensive to us today as a culture and what would have been offensive to us as a culture 50 years ago is pretty drastically different. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about, uh, you know, t today, all kind of uh, <laughs> special things happen at co uh, colleges. And 50 years ago, people got excited over penny rates, you know. <laughs> <laughs> ah. The, the good old college days. <laughs> the good old college days. So when so, life yeah, was I, simpler, <laughs> it was a simpler time. <laughs> so th these things are you know, these things are somewhat objective and 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 are, are subjective and and uh, law is supposed to be an objective thing and not a subjective thing. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there is a community. It, it talks that speaks to the idea of a community standard of the idea that that the community knows what's right or the community knows what's wrong. If you um if you're defending yourself and you shoot somebody dead, you're not guilty of murder, you're guilty of self-defense. You know, it, it's uh if, if you um get really angry at something, you're it's temporary insanity because 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 the people on the jury can relate, "Hey, you're a normal person, but they pushed your buttons just a little too hard, so we're not going to give you, you know, the maximum sentence. We're not going to charge you with uh, this crazy mandatory minimum sentence for violence because we know you're probably not going to do that again. 